Hello, everyone. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Dr. Clement Chumesi. I am currently a medical statistician at the Norfolk Department of Medicine at the University of Oxford. Now, one question that most students and other researchers often ask me is that, Clement, what is the best way to power our study? By powering their study, what they mean is that how do we determine the minimum sample size that is required to help us detect an effect in our study if they truly exist? So this, in view of that, has motivated me to start a weekly uh, lecture series on power analysis and sample size determination. Um, so it means that every Saturday I'm going to um, give like a short video um, on um, power analysis and, and based on different designs. So it means it will be really useful uh, to you, um, especially for those who are aiming to start at, at clinical trials, or you could be someone writing for a grant and also probably um, a pump um, priming application and so on and so forth. So now one thing we have to notice that um, it is essential in our study that we don't just um, conclude or predefine sample size and then perform some experiment or start collecting data and so on and so forth based on the sample size that we have predefined. As a matter of fact, you have to be you have to carefully um, estimate and calculate this particular sample size in order to be able to detect an effect if it exists. Otherwise, you will end up spending huge monies on an experiment, on a clinical trial, on a study, and its findings cannot be trusted and cannot be even, if not trusted, and it means you've, you've literally done like um, a cost 90 job. And this is something we are trying to prevent as much as possible. And um, many researchers are not too sure the best possible ways to go about um, such power analysis. So one thing you have to note is that the power analysis can be done in a reverse fashion. So it's either you don't know the sample size, but you've already done some preliminary study. Sometimes you don't have any preliminary data. So meaning that you've, you've not done any um, um, previous study or you don't, there's no other information even in the literature to inform um, how to estimate or to determine on your sample size, right? So. So that is one one instance. So the instance is first of all, um, you have some preliminary data or based on literature and so on and so forth. You have some basic information, and now the goal is to be able to estimate that minimal sample size. And there are instances where you've already done the study, but you are not too sure um, the power associated with the kind of statistical analysis you've performed. So the whole goal for power analysis is to either help determine the minimum sample size that is required to help detect an effect, or first of all, to calculate the power itself associated um, with, with the study at a predefined sample size. And also, even if you are not too sure what is the effect, okay, so it means that the actual effect you're also interested in, in, in quantifying or measuring. So these are all things that we do. So when we say effect, so if you think about if you are doing if you are doing a study where the goal was to compare the, um, some difference in some outcome between two or more groups, the effect in this case is more like the mean differences. If we're looking at um, exploring, um, let's say, the effect of some set of predictors on an outcome, then the then the effect we are talking about would have been some the regression coefficient in this case. And um, if it's about correlation between two variables or two or more variables, then the effect could could just be that correlation, estimated correlation coefficient, and so on. So it is very imperative um, um, to be able to um, perform these analysis with ease as 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 a, as, as as a researcher. And then apart from it, the ease of computation as associated with these, you need to be able to correctly perform these using the appropriate softwares and also um, approach it in, in, in a more scientific and statistical fashion in order to prevent your study from being nullified on, on the basis of ethical concerns and so on and so forth. Now, there are several softwares that one could use to perform power analysis. 
Um, just to mention a few, of course, you could use um, these, um, any of these programming softwares or programming languages like R, Python, and so on. Um, but it is quite handy to also do in other customized um, softwares, though some of, some of them you might need to get alliances. Example is data for instance. So you can actually perform um, power analysis of, of, of different designs within Stata, which is quite handy. Um, but there's a free software available. So if something is free, then why should we worry ourselves trying to pay a huge money, um, especially when there's no licenses? So there's this um, open source um, software, which is quite handy and easy to use called GPower. And it is one of the efficient softwares that you could use to perform power analysis. So here, the goal is depend on the study design and the primary outcome or the main um, variable of interest that you are trying to measure. Okay, um, depend on these me measures, we are going to determine or depend on the kind of status car analysis you want to perform. We, the goal is to identify either the power associated with the analysis or to determine the minimum sample size um, that would help us achieve a certain predefined power and so on and so forth. Um, but one thing we have to note is that when you talk about the study designs, so for those who are into clinical trials, and you realize that in clinical trials, especially for adaptive clinical trials, sample size sometimes can re can be recalculated and even the study can be stopped early for either safety or futility. And so um, when it happens that way, it means that you need to be able to find ways and means to um, correctly or appropriately estimate the sample size to capture um, these dynamics so the setting or the type of design you are trying to work with. Um, sometimes too, you are doing a study where you just have, it could be a randomized control trial, or you're just doing a study where you have, um, it's, a, it's a two group uh, comparison study, where the goal is to compare um, with respect to some primary endpoint or some primary outcome, whether there's any significant difference between some two groups or more. When it happens that way, it means that we are going to obviously use a particular status car test to perform, or a particular status car methodology to perform these tests. Now, it means when you're computing the power analysis or when you're trying to compute the sample size or the, the power associated with, with the analysis, the goal is to, first of all, know the exact primary analysis you're going to do. Um, um, and then based on the primary analysis, whether you're going to end up doing a t-test, whether you're going to end up doing an ANOVA analysis, whether you're going to end up doing, a, um, let's say, a regression analysis. It means for any statistical method, you should be able to calculate the corresponding or perform the corresponding power analysis. So remember, there is no single fixed power analysis that 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 cut across all kinds of statistical methods. It means for um, every statistical method, we have its unique power analysis that one needs to perform. And keep in mind, the analysis could either be univariate or multivariate. By univariate, we know that most of the times, um, what we often do is to compare means. So it could be that you have um, a study where you're looking at before and after you um, before and after some intervention. So in, in such case, the observations or the, the outcome that we measure are often a paired outcome. And when it happens that way, um, you should be able to, for a study where you've not started that particular study and you are yet to collect um, data, you should be able to determine a minimum sample size that will help you to detect those um, effects, whether if it exists. And then it could be between two independent groups where you are trying to look at and whether there's any significant mean difference um, in the outcome between two groups. In that case, it's like a classical T test kind of comparison and situations where there are three or more groups is an ANOVA type kind of comparison. But one thing you have to notice that some, we know that depend on, depend on departures from parametric assumptions, often we stick to non-parametric methods. And, but in most studies, one thing I notice um, is that often when we are computing or calculating the power analysis or performing power analysis or determining the minimum sample size or the power itself, most of the time, even though we often use the parametric test to perform the power analysis, and we still end up making use of non-parametric methods to, to, to do the analysis, and which, which, which is quite 
Um, um, I mean, statistically, I would say confusing and if, if not to say inappropriate, because if you think about it, always your outcome, the outcome, the primary endpoint should tell. So if you realize that your primary endpoint, first of all, is not continuous, OK, or let's say your primary endpoint is something that is naturally skewed. So it means there's no way it can be normally distributed in the first place. So it means that in such cases, you, you very obviously end up comparing medians and you are going to compare medians. It means you are going to end up using non-parametric test. So when you are performing the power analysis, it will rather be imperative to perform such power analysis based on a non-parametric the, the, that particular non-parametric test you seek to or you hope to use, whether you're going to end up using the constant sign rank test, whether you're going to end up using my Whitney U test that is to compare between two independent groups, the constant sign rank test to compare um, is considering a man Whitney um, and T um, U test in the case of a paired sample or a match uh, matched pairs, right? So in such an instant, it means that you have to calculate or perform the power analysis based on um, the non that particular non parameter. It could be a Chris Cavallis comparing the medians between three or more groups and so on and so forth. But often we focus on using parametric methods to perform the power analysis or determine the sample size. And we end up using the non parametric methods instead to still perform these analysis. So here the goal is to um, help us understand practically with examples how to perform power analysis using some of these um, state-of-the-art um, softwares but the goal is to use g power so it means that for the series of analysis that we are going to or the series of talks we are going to do every saturday we are particularly going to focus on um g power which which is easy to download so it means in the next um, um video i'm going to show us how to download the video and then take us through um, um, um how to perform it for we'll start with the simplest cases and then we, we we kind of um upgrade upon it in other series so it means every particular analysis will be featured in a particular video so that we we, we don't have very lengthy videos and so on and so forth um so bear in mind that you are going to learn how to perform power analysis if the goal is to use parametric methods or if the goal is to use non-parametric methods yeah, so and so it's very imperative to know that. But remember, in order to do power analysis or determine the minimum sample sizes, there are specific information that we need to know. I'll touch more on this information and other specific information in the in the in the first main lecture. But one thing you have to notice, if you already have done collected this area analysis or a preliminary data or a preliminary study that you've already done, then it becomes um, imperative that in that case you can easily compute uh, or estimate or determine the the, the 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 minimum sample size for that but situations where you don't know you can also make use of some hypothesized and um, effect sizes and other um, um, assumptions which we will look at how to realistically estimate the sample sizes in situations where we have very minimal information about the, the, the first of all about um, certain specific um assumptions that we need to make yeah so we we'll look at how to make robust assumptions in such situations where we don't even have past data or maybe previous um, collected data to to facilitate or to help us power our study um and one thing we have to note is that apart from the fact that we can con perform so we can perform power analysis for the classical univariate statistical methods maybe t-test ANOVA even even when it comes to regression based models okay apart from that we can also perform power analysis for multivariate cases so it means for situations where we are trying to compare um, um, a certain outcome whether there's some kind of difference in its mean between two groups but now let's say that in your study, the goal was not to measure just one outcome. You were measuring several outcomes and the goal is to compare each of those outcomes between the 
between those those two groups. It could be three, uh, three or more groups. In that case, it means that instead of doing the study in, in a varied fashion, you have to you opt to perform a multivariate analysis instead, because in this case, you are measuring several variables, okay, and the goal is to look at how they differ between some groups. So it means that you have to identify or use the appropriate multivariate method to determine the sample size if that is the goal. So it means that if the primary endpoint or the main outcome of interest is just a single outcome, then of course you can go ahead with the invariate, um, uh, appropriate invariate um, status card test to perform this um, power analysis on. But if the goal or if your study aims to uh, measure several outcomes and, and the goal is to look at how they differ um, between some groups of interest or some comparable groups, then in that case, you need to now compute or determine the power or the sample size um, and based on the multivariate, appropriate multivariate analysis. Um, so these are things we are going to also cover in, in, in our series of lectures. So it's going to be very informative. And there are even instances where you want to now investigate complex relationships. So, so rather than just using the one dimensional, um, and let's say regression, where you are looking at a one dimensional relationship between some predictors on the outcome, which is often what we do, situate, but you now want to take it to the next level and rather look at a multi dimensional relationship with the help of models like structural equation models. So it means when you are doing a study and that the goal is to perform or the goal is to um, and perform um, a structural equation models by integrating, let's say, confirmatory factor analysis and then um, path analysis. Then it means that you have to uh, determine the sample size based on the, the, the status card method that you are going to use for your primary analysis. Yeah, so on this note, um, I'm not going to take much of our time. So this is just um, an introductory video just to um, tell us about the series of um, lecture series that I'm going to be doing every Saturday. And I believe that is going to be very, 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 very useful. And at the end of the day, and by the end of each video, you should be able to perform the power analysis or determine the sample size based on that particular design um, that I cover. And then I'm very sure, I mean, confident that um, it will be very, very useful for your respective studies. And then um, I believe um, by the end of the day, I would, I would, um, you would learn something from the analysis. And then one thing you could also do for me is to make sure you also share with your friends and contacts and if possible, subscribe to the channel so that the videos will be able to reach out to very a, a larger group and so on and so forth. So it means with your subscription, we are able to help the video reach more people. So please help us with that and we'll be very grateful. So without wasting much time, um, in our next um, video, we are now going to start uh, using GPower software to perform power analysis and also to determine sample size. But every statistical method or analysis that we are going to be focusing on, we will feature that in a particular video. So it means that um, the next series um, the, or the next video that we are going to do is going to focus on how to use GPower software to perform power analysis for situations where you have a single group or a single sample or situations where you have two dependent or independent groups, and then you want to perform power analysis based on a t-test, based on its corresponding non-parametric test. And then in a, the following subsequent videos, we would now look at ANOVA type models and then go on, on to the other more complex um, and designs and so on and so forth. Yeah, so this is going to be a very useful um, series of videos and I hope you benefit from it. Thank you very much and see you in the next for the next um, um, series of uh, videos and um, please take time, learn it, practice and I'm very confident that um, power analysis, sample size determination will become a thing of the past. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye bye.